Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the pedestrian uh, yield to the pedestrian in the crosswalk as to yield to the pedestrian in the streets. So therefore they feel that as long as they're hanging out in the street and doing whatever it is they're doing, um, you know, like maybe skateboarding or something like that, they feel that they have the right to obstruct your passageway through that particular street or take as much time as they want to get out of the way. Now, I, for one, would like to see something done in the borough of Emmaus, if at all possible, to improve on that situation. I don't know, like you said, and I also said in the beginning, it may be a legal thing and your hands may be tied, but I know that different boroughs make ordinances. The borough of Emmaus has certain ordinances in terms of when you can put up a shed or whether you need to put up a shed or you have to get a permit to put up a shed and various other things. So even though it may be a state law in reference to playing in the street or skateboarding in the street or rollerblading and hanging out, which is becoming a, in my opinion, major problem at the line in the playground, uh, being littering one of them, it seems that there's some way to get around the law that the borough of Emmaus can make an ordinance of their own. And when you're in this borough, you can't skateboard on the street or whatever would be suitable. So that's something that I would like to see worked on. Mr. Brown. Yeah, I just want to sympathize with Mr. Nottemaker. Uh, I, I've driven by there since the weather has been uh, pretty nice. and. Uh, Mr. Nottemaker, what, what he's seeing is literally children or teenagers, uh, however you want to, are, are just standing in the middle of the road, literally just standing there, and uh, they're being very disrespectful to the driver, uh, if anything, but uh, Madam President um, and also Chairman uh, of Public Safety, is there any way that maybe we can uh, talk to Chief Faust and maybe just uh, maybe kind of do, uh, have an officer there just to kind of train uh, some of these uh, yeah, um, Mr. Fabio will bring that up tomorrow at staff yeah. meeting when he uh, talks about but this But I, I have to say that it is a, a situation that we are testing our patients. Yeah, it, it, yes. we, actually, um, we actually had this conversation this morning, the, the chief and I did, but it wasn't regarding uh, the Lions Field, it was actually regarding the tribal area, uh, because it's, it's turning into the same kind of problem uh, over, over in that area as well. And uh, I'll bring it up to him in the staff meeting tomorrow, and uh, what I'll do is I'll send you an email if your email address is on there, um, and uh, just kind of give you a, an overview of, of how, our, how our conversation went in terms of your question. You know, I, I know that they're aware of it because I call them several times, and they always, I tell them that I hate to bother them because it seems like maybe they have more important things to do since he may have become the bank robbery capital of the world, but the thing is that it, at the playground, what happens there is that when the kids, and it seems like all kids should be able to go to a playground and have fun, and if you're 16 years old or 17 years old and you want to go on a swing and have a good time swinging, then that's fine. But what happens over at that playground is when those kids come there, then the younger kids and their parents feel like they don't want to be there because there's swearing going on and maybe even other activities. Um, so that's the reason that I think if we don't do something about it, it's only going to get worse. And somewhere we have to try to take back the burl from the kids because the kids seem like they rule. And the other thing, which would be my final thing, is that is there a law against walking around with your pants half down <laughs> in public. Is that a violation of some law? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Whether it's a fashion statement or not. There, there's a fine line between lewdness and freedom of expression. Uh, and and <laughs> we've, I, I've been through this in, in another community, and, and that same, but that point was brought up, was there's a fine line between lewdness and freedom of expression, and it depends on what's showing as to which one it is. Um, if, if bare skin is showing, uh, there may be a cause for police action. If it's not, and, and I know exactly what you're talking about, 
Uh, if it's not showing, then is there something we can do? The answer is pretty much no. Um, other than when I walk my dog in the morning out on Franklin Street, I can do it in my underwear. <laughs> That's, like I said, there's a fine line between I'm being numerous. Yeah, I know. But like I said, there's a fine line between freedom of expression and woundedness. Chance, you want to thank Mr. Nottingham? Well, I'll tell you what, then. We have to commend these kids because obviously they're learning very good law because it seems like everything that I've discussed is a fine line between legal or illegal. That's why they've been getting away with it for so long, though. Yeah. And not just any Emmaus. I mean, that, that is a problem everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in the city or, or out in the middle of Timbuktu. They're, they're doing the same thing. Well, I know there's going to be two people that are going to be very unhappy. All right? That's the one that runs the kid over. And two is going to be the parent of the kid that got run over yeah. along with the kid. So just think about those issues. And if there's something that, be, that can be done and you email me, I'll be happy to try to, I'm not going to run a task force or anything, but I would be happy to help in some way, so, all right. Thank you, Mr. Nonamaker. Anyone else with a personal appeal? John and I just set the 559 line I wanted to thank council, actually, for uh, going down broad Broad Street by Air Products and all there's a sidewalk now that's put in. And 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 then personally use it a couple times now and it's very handy. You don't have to cross the street and then cross back over again if you want to go down to Weiss or whatever. Uh, and and one of the other things then on that now that now that it is like that, there's a crosswalk down by 12th Street. I mentioned this to uh, Jeff a couple times, but uh, with the paved, road being paved and all that just didn't get addressed. But I wonder if a crosswalk might be able to get put in there going over from uh, basically the uh, north to the south side at 12th because there's a lot of kids that get picked up on, their, on the school bus there through a couple hours of the day because there's little kids up to high school kids and uh, that's a heavily used road with probably speeding going on I'll say the best and uh, again <laughs> touching on just an automaker stuff with the crosswalk uh, it may just you know help help with that safety aspect. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else with a personal appeal? Hearing none. Moving to community minute. Any member of council have an item to bring forward for community minute? Actually, I have two. We have uh, community cleanup. Earth Day is Saturday, April twenty first. Um, starting at 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., rain or shine, and uh, is out at the park. So anyone interested in attending can participate in that. And also on Saturday, April 28th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., if you have expired or unused prescriptions or over-the-counter medications, you can drop that off at the police department from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mr. Brown. Just one item for community day. Uh, since uh, Arbor Day is uh, upon us uh, and recycling, so I just want to bring attention to the borough residents. We have, I don't know, how many of these left in our garage? Uh, and they're about $10 a piece. So uh, these are the recycling bins. Uh, so uh, please come up and pick them up. Get them out of our garage. <laughs> Thank you. Special presentations. We have nothing this evening. Reading of the minutes. We have the April 2nd Council minutes in our packet this evening. Is there a motion to discuss with the formal reading of those minutes? Motion by Mr. Leidenberg, second by Mr. Barrett. Discussion? All those in favor? We have seven ayes. Additions or corrections? Hearing none, is there a motion to adopt as drafted? Motion by Mr. Leidenberg, second by Mr. Schuster. Discussion? All those in favor? We have seven eyes. Decision on bids, Mr. Happy. We have a decision this evening? Uh, yes. Um, if you look at uh, B in your packets, uh, we have an explanation of uh, the bids, and the low bidder actually had an incomplete bid, and we're asking um, that we disqualify uh, that bidder. They failed to bid on several items um, 
Therefore, we're recommending that uh, you accept bid number two, which is, uh, I believe it's Segura Concrete Services Incorporated. They have a complete bid, um, everything uh, checked out, and uh, we feel that they are, um, they, they should be awarded uh, the bid contract. Is there a motion to that effect? Motion to award the concrete bid to Segura. Motion by Mr. Leibenberg. Second by Dr. Waddell. Discussion? All those in favor? We have seven eyes. Which brings us to communications. First letter in our binder is addressed to Mr. Pepe. It's from Bud Coates, the Director of Health and Fitness from Rodale. They are looking to use the swimming pool on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 7 to 8 a.m. Um, and this request is from May 30th to August 31st. I will refer this to the Parks and Recreation Committee, Mr. Barrett. The next item is a request from PPNL. It comes from Liz Meese, the right-of-way agent. They are looking to install a new pool on Borough property. Uh, the borough property is located at 152 East Main. If you look at the map on the back of the correspondence, it looks like it's in the middle of the Canals Homestead area. So I will refer this to General Administration, Dr. Waddell, for review by your committee. The next letter comes from Kathy Mincer, uh, president of the Mass Youth Association. She's writing on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Association to request the removal of the pitching mound on South 4th Street backfield. In previous years, this field was used for the older boys in our organization without any problems. Several years ago, baseball went through the skylight of a home that sits below the field. We anyway had to pay the cost of the replacement. Um, it's been over three years that we've not allowed any of our older teams to practice on this field, so basically we have not utilized that field to its potential. This year we have 19 baseball and nine softball teams, although we're not counting in the five teams that would utilize the 80-foot base drops. This is one of the largest number of teams we've had in several years. We're therefore requesting if Public Works would remove the mound and take out the base drops to, at 90 feet. This will strictly be a field for younger teams with a 60, 70, and 80-foot base drop. I'm going to refer this to Public Works. Can you just go to staff? Oh, yeah, if that's the way you want to I don't to think it's anything we have to vote on. No. You, do, you don't want to review it at your committee? No, because of them saying that they need it done by the end of April. Well, uh, I don't until the first week in May. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay, then uh, staff will handle it. The next item comes from Mass Main Street Partners. They are looking to hold the third annual Mass Main Street Partners Beer Fest and Classic Car Show on Saturday, October 6th uh, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And they are looking to have this held at Community Park Arts Pavilion and surrounding lawn area. Um, Mr. Baird, I'm going to refer this to your committee. There's a couple items there that uh, we need to have reviewed and voted on. On the desk this evening was an application on uh, this board, board and commission's information sheet from Lilith Euler of the Mass. She is looking to serve on the Special Entertainment Committee. I will refer that to you, Mr. Barrett. Also is uh, the events information sheet from Lehigh Sager Bund. Yeah, Mr. Barrett, this is on your report for this evening. That's correct. Yeah, that's information that was needed for us to make the motion today. Did you discuss uh, the additional vendors at your last meeting? He's asking non-alcoholic, and currently they have an interest in kettle corn, and they'd also like to have uh, an area for displaying cars for Porsche Club. Um, we didn't discuss that. Um, we could probably make the motion to approve the portion that, um, that, you have this evening? that we have just this evening and then add that at our next Okay, then meeting. I will refer uh, this I think it would help them get through and get things in line. Yeah, so. Okay. Then this one will get referred to your committee. Okay. 
I had received a, a letter from Nora Williams. She is looking for a deaf child sign in the area of North 6th Street. Uh, apparently she has a deaf child. And I will refer this to the Public Safety Committee. I also received a letter from Cindy Fitzpatrick, who is the owner of the Conversational Threads and Fiber Studio on South 4th Street with issues dealing with parking. I believe we received a letter from her in the past on the two-hour parking, which is part of our parking inventory sign ordinance that uh, the committee is reviewing, so I will refer that to public safety as well. Does any member of council have an item, Mr. Barrett? Uh, I received a letter, and others may have received it as well. It seemed like it was the original copy, so I'm not sure that it did get copied. Uh, a letter from Bush O'Donnell from the Home Run Club, and they are requesting to use uh, the parking lot, or a portion of the small parking lot near the softball fields at Community Park for an event, a car wash event, on Sunday, May 6th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So that will go to my committee. Uh, however, um, it does look like a very short amount of time. Short time, yeah. Okay. It, does, it, does, it, it says that it's an annual event. I do vaguely remember it, um, but it's been, in the past, it's been held at the Burgery. Oh, okay. In May, so this is the first time that it would be held at Community Park. The first thing that I, I'm not sure where they would tap the water source well, from. Well, that's the question, the yeah. water supply. Um, and, are, I mean, they, they're offering to pay a reasonable fee and all that. I, I just, uh, from a fundamental kind of feasibility, I don't know that. What day would we do that? Uh, Sunday, May 6th. Sunday, May 6th. I think it would depend on that. I think the tap is behind that first pavilion on your left when you drive in. What is McClensic Drive? I think one behind that pavilion. But you'd have to run a hose from there out to their parking lot. If someone has that pavilion rented, I don't know that you'd want to take away the water supply of someone who already rented a pavilion in that way. And maybe there's a way to run it out of the pump house there. I don't know that. I think staff would have to answer some questions before we could approve that. Well, our next meeting, though, for May is May 7th. It's after the event. So it's too short notice so to, know, to know the answers. To give them a response to allow them to handle it. Yeah, I think uh, we're out of time for that. This is their first request to ask it to be held at the park? Uh, it is, yes. Yeah, the, the letter is dated April 2nd. However, that was the day before our um, meeting. So until it actually got to my packet, it was not until this most recent one. It was, in, it was still in an envelope. Any member of council have any feelings one way or the other? At this point, I'm uh, leaning towards declining. I just Sorry. remember having this uh, request for something like this before, and um, it was discussed for a while, and I, I think Jeff Clapper made it sound like it's, it's not really a doable thing it's in not. the park. But um, I guess, I, I, I think it's something that should be done on uh, another location, I mean, not in the park. Mr. Holtaker. When we discussed it the last time, Mr. Clapper was concerned about safety because we've never done it before about thinking about cars coming and going and people washing cars on our property and not really having a set way that it would be done. Now the last request was for the other end of the park, not this, not right. this specific parking lot, but this parking lot lends the challenge of the water's going to come across the street from somewhere. So who's going to have a few hundred feet of hose to bring the water over to do that? I think they'd be smarter going with a business who's done it before, and maybe it's something we could put on agenda for some committee to talk about if someone asks for a car wash, is there a way to do it? For the future. Right. Okay. Then let's deal with this request this evening. Mr. Barrett? Okay. I, I mean, there's... Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you have other yeah. comments to make. Uh, no, I really don't. I mean, the, the, our most in-depth conversation came last year from a church group. Um, if we wanted to base it off of that, it was denied then by all members of the committee. Um, I, I think that's probably the best way to do this, even though I'd love to see it work for them as a fundraiser, uh, just on the short notice and right. make sure that we do what's right for the community. I'm going to say that we should deny this request. Can you want to place that in the form of a motion then? I will. I set in the form of a motion to another request for the Home Run Club for their event on Sunday, May 6th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the sole reason that we did not have time to discuss it. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Holtz for discussion. All those in favor? 
We have seven eyes. Mr. Barrett, can I please have that letter? And uh, we have Mr. Pepe send them a letter indicating their reasonings. Any other member of council have uh, communication to bring forward? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Pepe, do you have anything else? No? Okay. For our engineer's report, we have no engineer this evening. Solicitor's report, Mr. Hamelmarker. I have no report this evening for you. Oh, okay. Well, I'm happy to answer any questions about any ongoing projects that you might have. Anyone have any questions for the solicitor? No? Okay. Unfinished business part one. We have nothing on our agenda this evening. New business, we have nothing. Unfinished business part two, we have nothing. Items not on the agenda subject to rule nine. Does any member of council have an item that they wish to bring forward? Hearing none, mayor's report. Mr. Mayor. Okay, I'm going to read uh, Proclamation 2012-308. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas and beautify our community. And whereas trees are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas Emmaus, Pennsylvania has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation and desires to continue its tree planting ways. Now therefore I, Winfield Jobes, Mayor of the Burby Mays, do hereby proclaim April 27, 2012 as Arbor Day in the Burby Mays, and urge all citizens to support the efforts to care for our trees and woodlands and to support our Burris Community Forestry Program. Father, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the hearts and promote the well-being of present and future generations. It's on the 16th day of April, 2012, at Emmaus, Pennsylvania. Five minutes. Okay. Committee reports. Public Works, Mr. Vandenberg. Yes, uh, the committee met uh, April 5th. Uh, we discussed several items, none of which need to have any um, action taken. Uh, we did have a public appeal from John <coughs> Donchez, and there were also several um, uh, commercial rental unit owners here. And uh, we just dis discussed um, water hookups, the water meter hookups, and the fees that are tied to it. And we are going to get more information and discuss it further at our next meeting, um, see if we can come to a resolution. If everyone got a chance to review this, I'll entertain any questions. And if not, I'll report progress. No questions for Mr. Lightmore? Thank you. Health, Sanitation, Conservation, Mr. Shipson. Uh Yes. Um, the, I just want to make one change that it says our next meeting is um, May 18th. Actually, our next meeting will be um, April 20th at 345. And uh, I'll report progress. Thank you. Parks and Recreation, Mr. Barrett, you have quite a lengthy report, so the floor is yours. All right. <laughs> I will try and go through them quickly. Um, the first one that we have, if you turn to your packet, um, letter I, uh, we have some lifeguards to hire. I'm going to put the first one as a separate motion, the reason being that I'm going to abstain. Uh, I've done business for this family, and I don't want conflict of interest. So. Uh, the first person to recommend is Matt Kowalczyk of Emmaus as a part-time lifeguard.